And our ancestors, when they arrived on these shores, just think of it, they spoke different languages. They had different cultures, different backgrounds, different traditions. But unbelievably, they all bound themselves back to this tradition, this covenant that was contained in the Mayflower Compact. This covenant that we, we republished in the Declaration of Independence. How unique in all of the world that one nation that was the resting point from people groups all across the world. It didn't matter the color of their skin. It didn't matter their language. It didn't e matter their economic status. It didn't matter whether they descended from nobility or whether they have a higher class or a lower class. It made no difference. Once you got here, we were all the same. Isn't that remarkable? It is absolutely remarkable. And out of that, e pluribus unum, out of that, out of many, one. That is the greatness and essence of this nation. And we know we weren't perfect. We know there was slavery that was still tolerated when the nation began. We know that was an evil. And it was a scourge and a blot and a stain upon our history. But we also know that the very founders that wrote those documents worked tirelessly until slavery was no more in the United States. And I think it is high time that we recognize the contribution of our forebears who worked tirelessly, men like John Quincy Adams, who would not rest until slavery was extinguished in the country. And we have them to thank for that. And so instead of continually going back and looking at the weaknesses and the stains of America, let's look instead at the greatness of America and we, because we were a self-correcting country. Michelle Bachman, legitimate candidate or fringe player. Uh, Bachman released a new ad in Iowa this week in which she calls herself the unifying choice that will beat Obama. But on that same day, she became the first Republican to sign the family leader's crazy candidate pledge. It's anti-gay, anti-choice, and it suggests African-American children born into slavery were better off than those born today. John, is she trying to have it both ways? Well, uh, Reverend Sharpton, she is someone who's always been a candidate that would unify the, the right wing of the party. She is a social conservative. She's never run away from that. And she wants to win Iowa to give her a springboard to the rest of the primary states. So really, it's no surprise that she would sign a document that puts her uh, and unifies her with the uh, right wing of the social conservative movement in Iowa. I mean, that's not, okay, not a surprise so, at all. So you're saying on national television, that the right wing of the Republican Party believes that blacks were better in slavery, their children born, than they are today, and that what she said about them being born with two parents and raised by a mother and father in slavery, let me put the quote up, because I want you to be very clear on what you're saying that they believe in. Slavery had a disastrous impact on African-American families, yet sadly a child born into slavery in 1860 was more likely to be raised by his mother and father in a two-parent household than was an African-American baby born after the election of the USA's first African-American president. Now, you are aware in slavery, many parents were sold to different states and never saw their kids again. It was against the law for kids to be named after their father. Are you going to stand by that statement? No, I, I would not stand by that statement. I, I don't, I don't, 
I didn't sign the pledge, uh, Reverend Sharpton. I, I, I didn't. I think that, that that kind of statement right now is is needlessly divisive. Well, what and, does it say uh, about uh, Bachman uh, that she signed the statement, John? What does it say about Bachman that she signed uh, the statement to you, Victoria? You know, and the statement also, if you read it, it also denounces uh, Sharia Islam and it includes stuff about the economy. So it's this kind of catch-all pledge about, uh, you know, making the stand of conservatism. And I don't know what to think of these pledges. We saw the abortion pledge and now we see this pledge. Uh, they could be important in helping frame uh, Republican voters. You know, it's an informational cue that they look to. But I get the sense that we're going to see a bunch of other pledges, and it's just going to become a non-starter. They're not going to become important. So she did this now in the hopes of standing out and, and cementing her lead. But I, I really think it's going to be useless at the end of the day. Christina, it's a, it's a, if she becomes a major player, if she comes out of Iowa a winner or second, and she's taken pledges like this, does she not hurt the mainstream Republican Party and becomes what conservatives like Brooks started fearing? This is just another quiver in the arrow that Democrats would use against her. Would she ever to become the general mm -hmm. election nominee? I mean, this is a woman who truly believes in many, many social conservative ideals, and she's signing a pledge, that doesn't really matter. She is incredibly socially conservative. The actual mm -hmm. language of this pledge, I'm sure she's signed many things that Democrats would say are out of the mainstream for the general electorate. So you're going to see this come up were she ever to be a general election candidate. Well, now, that's it's not only not in the mainstream, it's not factually correct. When they